Ah, the good old parents of the protagonists in the Pokemon games. Oh wait, what am I talking about? Not parents, the moms. Just the moms. Because apparently dads don't exist in Pokemon. Although there is one single exception when it comes to protagonists which came to us in Gen 3. Norman. Listed as the reliable one dad in the Pokemon Emerald Pokenav, Norman and his family, including his son or daughter, Brendan or May, moved to Hoenn so he could fulfill a role as the normal type gym leader at the Petalburg City Gym. Interestingly, he and his family actually came from the Johto region and Olivine City to be exact. Norman is good friends with the Hoenn region's Professor Birch, and the official Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire website even said that they went to college together. Having moved regions for this position, it seems that Norman works really hard at his job to provide for his family, and he's quite a serious trainer, being known as a man in pursuit of power. Although he's not entirely absent like other fathers in the games, he is almost always at the gym, and is rarely home because of this. The first time we arrive at Petalburg, Norman tells us that we're not yet strong enough to challenge him, and that we need to acquire four gym badges. When we do get them, the seriousness with which Norman approaches his job is demonstrated, as he tells us that while he is happy to be able to battle his child, he will not hold back. When he's defeated, his family and work balance is shown, as he said, As the gym leader, I can't express how upset I am, but as a father, it makes me both happy and a little sad. It's odd. He also swears that he'll avenge his loss because as a gym leader he can't stand to lose, even to his kid. Thematically, this seems to be the inner conflict that Norman has, his split personality between being a family man and a well-respected and powerful trainer. He even often tells the player to go visit their mom since he's unable to. In Pokemon Emerald, before rematching him, he says, I had a feeling that you would come. I would never refuse to accept a challenge from you. You do understand, don't you? Inside a gym, it doesn't matter that we're parent and child. No, because we are parent and child, we owe it to each other to do the best that we can. Isn't that right? Even after the player becomes the champion, although he says he has nothing left that he can teach them, he says that they should never stop striving for new heights, showing his resistance to complacency. There is definitely more to Norman than meets the eye, though. In Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, when the player gets the Eon ticket, which takes them to the island to meet Latias or Latios, Norman ominously says, It's been a good 11 years since I last saw a ticket like this. Which is very curious indeed. Strong, extremely dedicated, and not willing to lose, we know that Norman is a powerful trainer. But he definitely had to scale his team down to face us since he knew that we had so few badges the first time around. Although, granted, he did fight at his best with those lower-leveled Pokémon. But what is he really capable of? Using all of his appearances in the main series games, including some hidden ones, it's time to find out Norman's true power. The first time we encounter Norman in battle is in the first Gen 3 games, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Once the player has four badges, their father will now finally accept their challenge at the Petalburg Gym, where he's got quite a powerful team for this point in the game. Including a level 28 Slacking, followed by a level 30 Vigoroth, and another level 31 Slacking. Even with the Truant ability on the Slackings, they can still prove as quite a challenge to take down with their insane base stats. Notably, we can also take on Norman in the Ruby and Sapphire remakes, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. However, he actually has a slightly weaker team in these games with his first slacking at level 28, his Vigoroth at level 28, and his second slacking at level 30. And unfortunately, there's no opportunity to rematch him. But he is nowhere close to done here thanks to some crazily powerful appearances in other games. Norman is next found in the Gen 3 third version game Pokemon Emerald, where he can actually be battled on multiple occasions, unlike the originals. In the first battle, despite the fact that we encounter him in similar circumstances to Ruby and Sapphire, his team has changed quite a bit. He starts off with a new level 27 Spinda, followed by his Vigoroth now at level 27, a brand new Linoon at level 29, and his Slacking at level 31. With Teeter Dance to Confuse on the Spinda and Belly Drum on the Linoon, this team can actually cause quite a bit of trouble. But Norman only gets stronger from here in Emerald. After the player becomes champion, they can return to Norman's gym where he can be battled in four different doubles rematches that get incrementally more difficult. They start with his Pokémon in the low to mid-40s in terms of levels. Since his team steadily builds up in terms of levels and evolutions throughout the four rematches, for our purposes it's only necessary to look at the last rematch, in which he's become far more powerful and no longer appears to be holding back as much. In our final Emerald rematch, Norman begins with one of his slackings now at a whopping level 57, followed by a terrifyingly bulky brand new Blissey also at level 57, a new Kangaskhan at level 55, 
A new Tauros at level 57, his Spinda now at level 58, and his second Slacking now at level 60. Now that we've started to see what Norman is capable of, let's head to his final appearance in the main series games. Norman's final appearance occurs in Gen 5's Black 2 and White 2 where he takes part in the Pokemon World Tournament. He can be found battling in four different tournament styles, including a secret one where he rotates between three teams. Interestingly, Norman actually ties Giovanni for having the most species of different Pokemon than any other gym leader in the World Tournament, so this is super exciting. Don't forget that the World Tournament automatically sets all Pokemon to level 50, but we can get a great idea of new additions to his collection and how competitive his Pokemon have become. In the Hoenn Leaders Tournament, Norman now rotates between his Slacking, Spinda, a brand new Kecleon, a brand new Cast Form, a brand new Exploud, and finally, a new Zangoose 2, showing quite a lot of Gen 3 diversity in his collection. In the Type Expert and World Leaders Tournaments, Norman has his Slacking, a brand new Ambipom, a brand new Bufalant, a new Staraptor, his Exploud, and finally, a brand new Sawsbuck showing off some new Gen 4 and Gen 5 editions, meaning he's likely traveled quite a lot. Now, in 2012, there was a downloadable tournament through Nintendo Wi-Fi that was exclusive to Japanese and Korean games called Gathered Gym Leader, and features four trainers with new teams, one of whom is Norman. In this exclusive tournament, Norman uses his Slacking, Bufalant, Sazbuck, and a brand new addition, a Stoutlin 2. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Using all of his appearances in the main series Pokemon games, let's construct Norman's best possible team. The number one pick for Norman's best team is going to go to his powerful Staraptor from his Black 2 and White 2 World Tournament team, in which it's automatically set to level 50. However, all of his other Pokemon in the tournament that we've seen the level of in other battles are level 57+. Plus. And given that this is the biggest battling event he's ever been in, we'd assume he'd only want to bring his strongest Pokemon, so we can assume this thing is somewhere around there too. In the full Pokedex competitive battling metagame, Staraptor is currently in the UUBL tier, meaning it's banned from underuse but doesn't quite make the overuse tier by usage. Staraptor has incredible base stats with a good 100 speed, a great 120 in attack, and a solid 85 in HP too, making it an awesome physical sweeper for this team, especially with its flying type. Norman has an incredible moveset on this thing, including Stab or Same Type Attack Bonus Brave Bird and Stab Priority Quick Attack, along with Close Combat, which is incredible for a flying type to have, and Final Gambit too. Aside from that, he could also put moves like Stab Double Edge or Return, U-Turn for pivoting capabilities, Defog to get rid of Field Hazards, or Tailwind to help out with the team's speed. Norman Staraptor does have the Intimidate ability instead of Reckless, which could have been slightly better, but since this thing will be countering fighting types which he'll otherwise have trouble with, Intimidate is fantastic either way to lower their physical attack and start sweeping. The second spot is going to go to Norman's Blissey from his fourth Emerald rematch, in which it's at level 57. Blissey is currently in the UU tier and provides an unbelievably specially defensive role on this team, which helps out a lot since most of his Pokémon aren't that specially defensive to begin with. Do we even need to go over Blissey's stats? An unfathomable 255 in HP, the highest in the game, coupled with a whopping 135 special defense and a decent 75 in special attack too. Norman has had some great moves on it like Light Screen, Sing, and Protect, but it could also benefit from moves like Toxic to Poison Stall, Soft Boiled for Amazing Recovery, and coverage moves like Dazzling Gleam for Fighting Type Switch in Predictions, or Flamethrower. Blissey provides a pivotal special wall function on this team that can definitely stop opponents in their tracks. The third pick for Norman's best team is going to go to his Exploud from his Black 2 and White 2 World Tournament teams, which is also likely around level 57. Exploud is currently in the NUBL tier, meaning it's banned from never use, but doesn't quite make the rarely used tier. This thing is a key member of this team because its base stats allow it to fulfill a special attacker role, which is much needed since many of Norman's Pokémon are physical attackers. Exploud's got mediocre defenses and speed, but it actually has a great 104 in HP and 91 in both attacks. While Norman has solid moves on it like Stab Hyper Voice, Fire Blast, Focus Blast, and Ice Beam, it could also run Surf to help with Rock types, and Exploud's main move is incredible. Stab Boom Burst with 140 power, 100 accuracy, and no drawbacks whatsoever. That move alone makes Exploud a huge threat, especially with the right item, and it's an invaluable special attacker here with lots of coverage capabilities too. Next up is going to be one of Norman's Gen 4 Pokémon, Ambipom, from his Type Expert and World Leaders World Tournament teams, which is probably also around level 57. Now, at first glance, Ambipom doesn't seem to be that great of a Pokémon, but it definitely has its own niche and actually holds its own being in the NU tier. 
Ambipom adds some much needed speed to the team with a fantastic 115 speed stat, and a great 100 in attack as well. Now although Ambipom has access to the awesome skill link ability, Normans actually has Technician, which is actually considered to be just around as good competitively, since it raises the power of 60 power or less moves by 50%. Pair this with moves like Stab Priority Fake Out with a guaranteed flinch or acrobatics to tackle fighting types, and you've got quite a powerful sweeper, in addition to moves like Stab 102 Power Return and coverage moves like Fire Punch, Pursuit for Ghost Types, U-Turn or Low Kick too. Ambipom is a speedy yet powerful presence that even has a way to help out with fighting types despite its pure normal typing. And the second last pick is going to go to Norman's Tauros from his Pokemon Emerald final rematch battle in which it's at level 57. Tauros is currently in the PUBL tier of competitive battling, meaning it's banned from the PU tier but doesn't quite make the NU tier by usage. Tauros has a very high physical attack and speed, along with a good physical defense and mediocre HP and special defense too. With the incredible Intimidate ability to lower the opponent's attack each time Tauros is switched in, along with moves like Stab Return or Body Slam, and coverage moves like Earthquake, Rock Slide, Stone Edge, Outrage, and Zen Headbutt to counter fighting types, along with a Life Orb item for extra damage, Tauros can perform a great physical sweeper role on this team to clean up from the damage his more tanky Pokémon have done. And the final spot on Norman's best team is going to go to his Stoutland from his Black 2 and White 2 exclusive Gathered Gym Leader Download Tournament, which is also likely around level 57. Stoutland is currently in the PU tier, the worst ranked tier in competitive, although it actually is surprisingly good. Amazingly, all of Stoutland's base stats that it actually needs to use range from 80 to 110, with its attack having received a 10 point boost in Gen 6, meaning it can fulfill an amazing tank role with decent speed too. Norman Stoutland has Intimidate to further lower those pesky fighting types attack stat. Though Norman doesn't have amazing moves on his, Stoutland can definitely do massive damage with moves like Stab 102 Power Return, Super Power, Pursuit, Stab Facade with 140 Power if Stoutland has a status, or coverage moves like Ice Fang and Crunch. Stoutland is honestly a really well-rounded Pokemon that can fulfill any niche Norman's team needs, which might be a physically bulky tank in this case. Although this is definitely Norman's best team, he does have a massive variety of other Pokemon that could potentially get a spot depending on who he's battling. The most notable of these would be his level 60 Slacking, which is his highest level Pokemon and his signature Pokemon, but its truant ability only allows it to use a move every other turn, which leaves the battle too vulnerable to set up moves despite the fact that it could get one massively powerful attack off beforehand. So Stoutland is overall a way more consistent choice. He's also got a level 57 Zangoose, which unfortunately doesn't have the Toxic Boost ability, otherwise it might have gotten a spot. Third is his level 55 Kangaskhan, which is a great Pokemon, but is outclassed by faster Pokemon like Tauros and Ambipom. Aside from that, he's also got Pokemon from around the same level like a second Slacking, Kecleon, Bufalon, Sazbuck, Spinda, and Castform, all of which are outclassed in one way or another. There we go everyone, we have discovered Norman's true power and unveiled his strongest possible team in the main series games. If you enjoyed the video and are looking forward to more from this series, please be sure to leave a like, share it on social media, and subscribe with notifications on by hitting that bell icon if you haven't already. Don't forget to comment down below with what trainer you wish to see featured next. The comment with the most likes will pick the trainer for the next week's episode and will be featured on screen. Before we go, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your generosity. If you enjoy my content and would like to support the channel and get some cool perks too, the link to my Patreon page will be in the description below. This has been Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for more... True Power.